And I want to welcome all those who are going to watch us on our program, A Heart After God, and also listen to this via podcast. You are in the room with us. Really quick, who's excited about Thanksgiving? Let's be honest. I'm excited about the grub. I'm excited to eat. Come on now. I'm ready to lift some plates. Turkey plates, pie plates. Come on now. (laughs) You know, I love Thanksgiving. I really do for multiple reasons. One of them is we get to grub, man. We get to hang out with family. No counting calories. Come on, somebody. We're just going in. But this week, as we gather with families and have a great time and uh, share memories and, and, you know, see family members and, and in-laws and outlaws and, you know, praise the Lord. <laughs> and we just have a great time. Come on now. Um, when we begin to eat and get our grub on, uh, let me start right here. There are going to be two words I'm going to give you that are going to save your life, right? Okay. These are two words at Thanksgiving that are going to save your life. Are you ready? Okay. After you've eaten like four pieces of pie, you got yourself like three rounds of turkey and ham and all that fun stuff. Here are two words going to save your life. Ready? I'm full. I am full. Come on now. I mean, you're gonna be. You're gonna get to a point where it's like I can't even. I can't even look at it. Like if I just look at it, I'm gonna like fall out. Come on now. You know, like we will get to a place that we are so full that you're like I'm full. I can't even. Ha-. I mean, it looks delicious. It looks. It looks so good. But I can't have any more because I am just so full. Like I'm just like like there's no more room. I'm tapped out. You know. And, and I know. And after they bring that that one pie, they're gonna bring a third pie and a four pie, and you're gonna be like I'm done. I'm full. And and where am I going with this thought? Here's where I'm going with this thought. I started to think that this. This week, as we get so full in the physical, I wonder if we can just chew on so many things of God that our spirit would get so full, come on somebody, that we're like, God, I don't care if you don't do anything for the rest of the year or even the rest of my life. I already have 10,000 reasons to give you praise. Come on somebody. Forever. And I I really want to talk about us getting full today as it pertains to the goodness of God. Now, why am I saying all this context? Because in the verses we just read, the, the story that we, we, we come upon is there are 10 lepers. How many lepers? There are 10 who get healed, but really only one who comes back to give him praise. Now, these 10 lepers, and let's really, really identify this, and I pray it encourages you. Um, I believe it's, it's not just in the scriptures for us to go, man, that's jacked up, but it's in the scriptures to teach us something. Tell your neighbor, say, we're going to learn something. Say, we're going to learn something through his word. We're going to learn something, okay? Why don't you talk to my neighbor? They're your family member. You should talk to them, all right? <laughs> but I don't know them. Well, get to them. I'm joking. All right, so we, <laughs> we, I believe that this has given us a principle. It's given us a, a, a picture of gratitude and how this, breaks, how this breaks down. Now, the 10 lepers in which we read, the Bible says that these 10 lepers were all gathered together and, and they were standing afar off. Now, it's important that we understand, you know, the cultural context to fully understand the depths of the scripture is at this time, biblical time, if you had leprosy, you would be socially outcast. So you would actually be, uh, you know, if you, leprosy was a skin disease, it was contagious. It was something that, that you weren't really necessarily born with, but it was put on you because you came into contact with someone who had the same disease. And so this leprosy, what it was is it, it, would, it would disfragment your skin and even your body. And so it would really just disfragment your whole appearance when you had contracted this leprosy. And because it was contagious, they would literally estrange you from your family and you would be outside the city because you couldn't come in. Obviously, they don't want nobody to contract that. And so you, you would be uh, disconnected. You would be rejected. Uh, you would be you know socially uh, not involved. It would just kind of be on the outskirts and 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 what ends up happening is is these guys or 10 we don't know their guys but 10 lepers could have been male and female but these 10 lepers who were out there uh, the bible tells us that when they were all together that they had inside of them something to cry out to who god was now i, I want to say that these 10 lepers uh, uh just a quick side note i think it's amazing how 10 people that that all have the same issue were all sitting sitting together Isn't it interesting that somehow people that have the same issue find each other? I'm just going to leave that one right there. Feel free to chew on that and then I'll just go on. You know, they could go to different services, but they just find each other. They could be at different parts of the company, but they just come anyway. I better move on. Okay, just tell your neighbor, say it's good, it's good, it's good, it's going to get better. All right, so, so these 10 guys are all hanging out together, right? They all have leprosy. Now, 
This is something they contracted. And I want to I bring your attention to verse number 12. If you can't put it up here for me, we're going to preach from the text here. Verse number 12, the Bible says that, that as Jesus was going to the village, 10 of these men, they stood afar off at a distance. They, they, they stood kind of at a distance from, from Jesus. They were kind of far off from him. And these 10 guys, I, I can respect them. I, I know that, that in the text, it almost seems like, well, those nine were jacked up. But I can have a sense of respect for them because even though they were at a distance, even though they felt disconnected, even though they could have been like, you know what? Life's messed up. This is cold. They have so much to be ungrateful for because think about it. I have leprosy. Haven't seen my family in 10 years. I can't even, you know, go apply for a job. I can't because I have this defense efficiency in my life. I contracted it. I didn't want this, but it jumped on me. There are so many things that could have been ungrateful for, but the Bible says that even though they were at a distance in verse 13, watch what they do. The Bible says they called out with a loud voice and they said, Jesus. In other words, they're like, I have so much to be ungrateful for, but you know what? Jesus. And here's what I feel like I want to tell somebody this Thanksgiving is maybe you have so many things that you could be ungrateful for. My prayer is that today you still call out to Jesus because he's good. Say amen. Now, I, I love this text because so many of us in the, in the cultural you know, problem we have is oftentimes we live in a culture that will cry out to everything but Jesus. We will cry out to, to, to social media. We will cry out to, to our, our friends. We will cry out, you know, to, to our boss. We'll cry out to the government. We'll, we will argue with everybody except cry out to God. But I love the fact that these men said, I'm tired of crying out to people and just complaining because it ain't changing nothing. For once, I see Jesus in the room. I'm going to cry out to Jesus. And I wish that today there were some people that got a revelation that I'm not going to complain on my Facebook, on my soul, on my Twitter. Instead, I'm going to get on my knees and I'm going to cry out to God. I'm going to give you three seconds to cry out to God. Ready? One, two, three. Oh, Jesus. Baby, I, I'm wearing a tie today. I feel like a preacher. Okay, I feel like a preacher. Dangerous. I'm wearing a tie. Okay, I'm trying. Okay, so they call out to Jesus. I think this is important. You said, why, why are you extracting this on a Thanksgiving message? Because here's the truth. I know we all have things that are deficient in our lives. The 10 lepers had a apparent deficiency in their lives. They had an ailment. They had a need. Their need was healing. And I think if we're all honest, there might be somewhere in our lives, somewhere in our relationships, somewhere that we kind of feel like I'm lacking. And if we're not careful, we will, al we will allow that need to stop us from crying out to God. When instead we can say, you know, I know I have so much to be mad about. Keep my, co come on somebody, you know. I didn't get that testimony like, like Brother Chris, man. I got this. I said, I, they laid me off. What do I have to be grateful for? Oh, but if you could just cry out to Jesus. Oh, God. I don't know who I'm talking to today. Oh, if this Thanksgiving you said I'm going to approach it different, instead of just crying and complaining and calling and being on the phone for, for two hours with my comad, with my cousin, and say, oh, instead of just binging on Netflix and, and instead of just binging on the, on the novelas, I instead I'm going to binge on the Word. Oh. I'm going to cry out to God. Why? Because I know God can change something. Oh, what could happen with a man and a woman and a family that says, turn the TV off. We're about to cry out to God. Watch how God will do a miracle. Is there anybody in this place that still cries out to God in this generation? I'm tired of crying out for the hand of man. I want to cry out for the heart of God. I'm going to give you one more time. Just give God a shout. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for saving me. Okay, no, all right. They kicked me off the worship team a long time ago. They cried out to God. They said, Jesus. I love this. They said, Jesus. Jesus. I, I got a deficiency. I have things I cannot change. But I'm going to cry out to God. Because I've cried enough to Papi Chulo. Papi Chula made the Thanksgiving message. Oh, Lord, help me. Okay. I've cried out enough. And that ain't changing nothing. But today I'm going to cry out to Jesus. And they cried out, Jesus. Us, us, us. That's how I read it in my mind. You know? And this is what they said. This is powerful. They said, Master. They didn't say Jesus, Savior. They said, Jesus, master. 
This word master means Lord. In other words, they were putting Jesus on the rightful place, the throne. Jesus, you're the ma- God, you are the master. You are Lord. You are the maker of heaven and earth. You, you measured the sun, the moon, the stars. You told the ocean how far it could go and it had to stop. You told the mountains. You ordered my inmost being. Master, I acknowledge the position in which you are in my life. You are master. And as I, I was reading this, the text, I, I find it so apparent that, that what was so beautiful is in the midst of their difficulty, they say, God, we know you're still in charge. And here's what could happen to many of us when it, we come into a place of ungratefulness is we, we want God to be savior. We don't want him to be master. Oh, Jesus. I want a savior. He says, but I, I came to be Lord. Can, can I go a little deep? I know it's Thanksgiving service. Go. Okay. The truth is, we're not saved because we confess Jesus as Savior. We're saved because we confess Jesus as Lord. I will take the two claps this morning and preach as best as I can. We all want a Savior. But is he the Lord of your life? You're in charge, God, not me. So how can I bring a charge against you? Because you know all things. And so they called him master. In other words, God, we know you're in charge. I know you are my Lord. I know you're my Savior. I know, God, that you're in charge. And here's what I want to say. Maybe in our our lives, what area is lacking God's provision because we had not made a master over that area? Master over my family. You're the master. I know I get a lot of amens on this, but it's okay. Master over my future. Master, God, you're in charge over my single life, over my marriage. You're in charge how I raise my children. Your word is supreme to the future. Someone shout amen. Master. Master, Lord, maker of heaven, the one who I know you could just breathe and the Red Sea opens. The one that I know that you can raise the dead to life, open blind. The one I know that measured the sun, the moon, and the stars. I know I'm sick and I got a deficiency and I have some areas that are not healed. But master, but you have pity, mercy on all of us. This word pity is mercy. Now, I love the mercy of God. Man, this is going to bless somebody. The mercy of God is very different than God's grace. Grace is God giving us what we don't deserve. That's grace. Mercy, okay, is God not giving us what we do deserve. That's mercy. In other words, God, you're not going to give me what I really do deserve. I deserve hell. I deserve a good Come on, somebody. That's what I, because I have been disobedient. The truth is I have sinned. The truth is I have rebelled. I didn't, oops, no, I disobeyed. But mercy is God. Would you give us what we don't deserve? Would, would, you not, would, you, would you be so good and let your mercy protect? God, would you be so merciful and give us, Father, and protect us? And I'm telling you, if there was ever something to be grateful for in the kingdom of God is his mercy. Because God didn't give you what you really did deserve. You really did deserve to be broken, jacked up, messed up from the toe, from the floor. We really did deserve that. But God says, I gave you mercy. Mercy, write this down somewhere. This is not your first point. Write it down. Mercy protects me. Mercy protects me. It's his mercy that God says, God, thank you, Father, that because your mercy, I didn't get what I did deserve. Because of your mercy, I didn't get in that car accident. Even though I was speeding. Oh, Jesus, help me. Because I deserved it, but God, your mercy protected me. Thank you, Lord, that I didn't get divorced even though I made a dumb mistake. Your mercy. Thank you, Lord, that I should have died five years ago, ten years ago. Thank you, God, that you know what? I should have have lost my job a long time ago. I deserved it, but God, your mercy protected me. Thank you, God, I didn't get that cancer. Thank you, God, I didn't die. Thank you, God, my family. Anybody thankful for the mercy of God? Give God a shout this morning. Thank you, Father, for your mercy. If I had more time, I'd give you Job. I'd preach Job chapter 1 and verse 10, but I'm going to read it to you. If I had more time, I would have read it to you and had it ready on the screens. And what do you know? It's right here. And he tells Job, 
Have you not put a hedge? This is Satan talking to God. Put in the NLT. Even better. Watch this. In the NLT. It says, have you not put a hedge of protection or a hedge around Job's household and everything he has? Satan tells God, God, I can't mess with Job. You want to know why? Because you're protecting him. I can't touch him. I can't touch his home. I can't even touch his stuff. And I came to tell somebody, you ought to thank God for the things that didn't happen in 27. I know you don't really realize them because they never happened but God protected you that alone could give God praise for more than 10,000 reasons just say amen and tell three people around him to around you just say thank God for his mercy tell them that thank God for his mercy thank God trust me tell your neighbor for the things that didn't happen they and it's hard sometimes because it didn't happen you didn't get that flat tire but you just kept driving I wish God did something for my life I was like, you know what she just did right now? You're gonna be late for that date. And she would have said, no, come on, somebody. <laughs> I wish God did something with my life. You know, God, God had God had you covered. Your heel was gonna break in that interview. But the God upheld that pump with his mighty right arm. Come on, somebody. <laughs> I wish God had favor on my life. He's like, girl, you were about to eat it, you know. The things that didn't happen. I didn't lose my job this year. I did. I didn't lose my mind. It's mercy. I got one clap from downtown. Amen. I'm with you. I did it. Someone say it's mercy. God, I could preach that, but we're going to move on. Okay. Just say mercy. Mercy. All right. Let's continue working this text. The Bible says Jesus had mercy. They understood that it was the mercy of God that would heal them. It wasn't because they deserved it. Oh, Lord, here we go. They could have been like, Lord, I deserve it. Look, what's, look what they've done to your child. They said, no, have mercy. Because what happens is the enemy of gratitude is entitlement. Okay, like I deserve it. No, mercy. Someone say mercy. Okay, next verse. We worked that one pretty good. Verse 14. We just squeezed it out. Come on, we just worked that verse. All right. When he saw them, the Bible says, go show yourself to the priests, and then they were cleansed. Now, I, I, I'll do the best I can here with the time that I got. I, I'm fully aware of the time. But, 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 but Jesus tells him, he says, I want you to go show yourself to the priests, and as you go, you are going to be cleansed. I want to bring your attention to the words, as they went. Say it with me. And as... They went and as they went, in other words, they their obedience was their 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 revelation on the goodness of God and that his word was good and that his word is powerful. As they went, their healing came on their life. So it wasn't like God first heal us and then we'll go. It was as they were like, okay, Lord, you said if we go show ourselves to the priest that we're going to be healed. Well, let's obey your word and let's walk this thing out. So they started walking. You know, and they were going and they were walking. And the Bible says that as they went, they started getting healed. Meaning that God begins to heal us when our mind, okay, our mind is ahead of our present situation. When our revelation is ahead of our situation. Gratitude is not my situation. It's my revelation. And my miracle is not tied to the faith of my present reality. My miracle and my breakthrough is tied to my mental revelation of what shall happen and calling those things that are not as though they are. And the God who said, let there be light and there was no light, but then there came light will still bring healing into my mind. And so I'm going to walk this out. And I just want to tell somebody, God wants to take you to a place of breakthrough, but you're going to have to get moving. You're going to have to get going and obey. Oh, Jesus, help me. He says they went and they were walking and, and, and they got healed. And, and, then, and then what happens is what ends up happening is, is the Bible says here, next verse, verse 15, one, how, one of them. How many of them? I'm going to get you a point right now. If you're wondering, when am I getting my first point? I got my pen ready. It's coming. Okay, it's coming. Bible says one of them. One of them. When he saw he was healed, he's like, trip out. This worked. God's word works. One of them, when they got healed, 
he's like, you know, I'm going to go back to Jesus. And he came back and he praised God with a silent voice. Oh, that's not what it says. Come on. What does it say? You know that loud Freedom House Church? You know what? There are times to be silent and I get it. There are times, shh, quiet. I'm going to watch the movie. Don't you make noise. I'm trying to watch the movie too. Okay. There are times to be silent. And believe me, I love those times. Those times are special. Shh, chill. Woo. Okay. But there are also times. Oh, God. <laughs> like last night when my USC Trojans beat the UCLA, I couldn't stay. I, you know how it's going to work it in there some way. Sorry. Hope I didn't lose anybody on the program on that one. Okay. But there are times. Oh, Jesus, help me. That I can't stay silent because my silence is, is proof that I'm not grateful. I know I'll get some amens from some parents right now. I know parents are going to amen me right now. I know parents are going to be like, oh, preach that, Pastor Josiah. Come on, somebody. If your child comes to the table and you make them a meal and they don't even say thank you, they're just like, this was a moment to be silent. You're like, no, it wasn't. Let's go. You know, they're like, no, I'm just, you know, not that kind of person. <laughs> you know. <laughs> I don't get some amens from some wives right now. Here it comes. Oh. See, the fellas are like, come on, Pastor, just stay with me. <laughs> right? She fixes it all up. You know, come on, somebody, taking, and you ain't gonna say she looks good. You're like, oh, I'm just kind of silent. I'm silently appreciated. No, you better tell your mama, girl. Woo, come on, somebody. I wish I got some amens right there. Come on now. She wants to hear your appreciation. <laughs> and I love these guys. Oh, I love this guy because he's like, I know all you nine are like grateful because they got healed too. They went on. And, but he says, you know what? I got to come back and I got to say thank you to Jesus. And I'm not going to come back with a silent praise. I'm not going to come back with a quiet praise. I'm going to come back with a grateful heart. And I'm going to come back with a loud. I'm going to let everybody know how thankful I am for what. If it had not been for the Lord and what he done for me and how he changed my life. And if it wasn't for him, I wouldn't be who. I am. I want to give somebody to make a loud voice and give God a shot this Thanksgiving. Hey, thank well, I'm not that kind of person. We saw you at the game. <laughs> Turns out you yelled at that ref. You're that kind of person. Come on, somebody. I mean, we're at the game. Some people are like getting in. One guy was like banging the chair. I was like, bro, it was just a five yard penalty, you know? <laughs> And they, and they, anyway, I better move on. Okay. Amen. I'm wearing a tie. Come on, somebody. All right. They came back praising God with a loud voice. Let me give you point number one. Write this down. Here we go. Point number one. Point number one. Write this down. Gratitude is when I come back to show my thankfulness. Jesus shows us in the text. Gratitude is when I come back to show my thankfulness. It is not gratitude if I don't show my thankfulness. There's no such thing as silent appreciation. It doesn't exist. Well, in my head, I thought it. No, no, no. Okay. It is not the thought that counts when it comes down to that. Come on now. All right. It's when I show my thankfulness. The Bible says he came back and, 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 and he says with a loud voice, I just, and watch what he said in verse 16. Watch what he did. Watch this. Go, go, go. Verse, verse 16. The Bible says he threw himself at Jesus' feet, and he thanked him. Now, now, I love reading the Bible and looking at it and jumping in the text. And, and, and I know sometimes we read the verses and we and just read them real fast, but, 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 but if, if sometimes we give you a good Bible study tool. Slow down. When you read the Bible, slow down. Okay, got my chapter in. Let's go. No, slow down. You'll find nuggets. They're right there, like just nuggets. And you, don't just read the Bible, feed on the Bible. You know, read it. Mm. Mm. That was good. And then move on. Come on, somebody. Right. I felt like Peter Pan right there. You know, when they're eating the fake food, you know what I'm saying? All right. 
He threw himself at Jesus. Now, now watch this. The Bible says he threw himself. Like, threw himself. Let's think about this. I mean, I'm talking like... <laughs> Boom! <laughs> At the feet of Jesus. He was like, oh, no, 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 no. No, no, you don't realize. I had a deficiency. I know there's so many more things I want to do. And there's so many goals and aspirations. And, and now that I'm healed, I, I do want to go apply for that. And, you know, I haven't seen, I haven't seen, you know, you know, uh, 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 you know if your name is, is, is uh, Susan, what's well, my mom? But if your name is Susan, you know, he's like, it wasn't like, I haven't seen Susan. Let me go hook up with Susan. I'm healed now. Come on, somebody. You know, it, wasn't like, it wasn't like, oh, let me go talk to Papi Chulo. Come on. Oh, Jesus, I went there. Papi Chulo made it twice. And I, let me go talk to Papi. Now that I'm healed. Oh, now that I'm healed, let me go, let me go apply for that job. Oh, now that I'm healed, let me move on because now I'm healed. Oh, God did something for me. Let me just keep moving. Let me just go on. No, he's like, I'm not going to be that type of believer. I'm not going to be that type of person. I'm not going to be that type of, of, of attitude. I'm going to come back and I'm just going to... Come on, somebody. Tell your neighbor to be like, no, don't do that. Come on. <laughs> Through. He just slid into home base. At the feet of Jesus. It was a physical action to show his appreciation. I'm going to get more amens from parents right now. Watch this. Okay. Parents, stay with me. How many know that it's not enough for your kids just to say thank you? See, I got one amen down there. It's not enough. I mean, that's level one. I'm glad you said thank you. But why don't you clean your room? Show me that you're thankful for that room. You're like, you know, why don't you wash the dishes? Thank you, Lord. My mom made dinner tonight. Like, Thank you, Lord. My dad. You start watching. They're like, okay, that is grateful. Why don't you take care of that car I bought you? Come on, somebody. Oh, come on. Help me out. Show me that you care about it. Show me that you appre appreciation is action. It is not just, level one is words. That's level one. And can I just be honest? Okay, oh, you know, I love you. That's fine. You know, let's be honest. But I think, I, I think as believers, it's easy to shout praise. But can I show praise? And I'm not just talking about clapping, dancing, and, and running around the church. I'm talking, can I serve? Can I sow? Can I share? Can I show my appreciation for what God has done? Can, can, I, can I be like, thank you, Lord, and, and begin to show what it is, my appreciation. You know, you know, my wife tells me this. I don't know if you guys ever heard this before. Maybe you have me. My wife always says this. Don't just tell me. Oh, you guys know that one too? Okay, praise. It's not just me, brother. Come on. All right. I thought it was just me. All right. Don't just tell me. <laughs> Help us, Lord. I wonder if God's like, don't just tell me. Oh, I got, they, nobody said show me on that. What happened? What happened? What happened was, come on. I know you tell me, oh, thank you, Lord, for saying it. God's like, I know you're saying it. Show me. How does, because gratitude is shown. It is an expression. Okay, okay, watch this, watch this, watch this, let's move on. Let's move on. And so, so he, he throws himself at the feet of Jesus, okay? Now, now the Bible says this. I mean, oh, 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 okay, point number two. Let me get point number two. I got to move quickly now. Let me get the piano. Let me get the, the, land the plane here because I will keep preaching. We got baptism. Okay, I'm out. I'm out. Number two, heaven notices our gratitude. Based upon this text, we can, we can see that gratitude is me coming back to show my appreciation. It is not gratitude if I don't come back to show my, it's not gratitude. Now, also we know is that heaven notices our gratitude because the Bible says that when he came back to where Jesus was, threw himself at the feet of Jesus, Jesus was there. And here's what I, when I was looking at this text, it kind of, it jarred my mind. I go, man, Jesus never left. Okay. Jesus actually stood there. Let's see who comes back. Come on, somebody. Heaven notices our gratitude. Jesus wasn't like, well, you're all going to have to find me. Just like, no, they're going to get healed. And I know when they're getting healed. I'm going to be right here. Let's see who comes back. Now, that may look on the surface of like the cup is half empty. Like, man, God won't just be like, chill out, you know. But the truth is, God knows how good he's about to hook you up. Come on. Let me, let, me, let, me, let me help out the guys. Guys, you know when you plan that good date? You're like, you got it all planned out? 
He's like, we're going to go here, bam, boom, uh, and then whoop, uh, and whoop. She's going to love me. Like, whoo, it's going to be a good night, married people. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. You're not going to wait for gratitude and be like, oh, I wasn't, I'm, thank you for all this. Oh, you know, I wasn't expecting that. You're like, I was. Oh, come on now, you know. <laughs> yeah. He bought her that car, you know, and she's like, thank you. Like, oh, don't worry about it. You're like, I'm, I'm glad you said that. Come on. <laughs> Heaven notices our gratitude and our ingratitude. Because the other nine, Jesus says this. Oh, here we go. Jesus says this. Watch this now. Go to verse number 18. Has no one returned to give praise? Actually, verse 17. Go back. I'll get to that in a second. Verse 17. He says, Jesus asked, we're not all ten cleansed? Now, let's, let's, let's put ourselves in the text. Guys on the floor. Right? On the floor. Jesus, thank you. I shot double, thank you. And Jesus sees him. And he says this. We're not all ten cleansed? And he says, where are the other nine? When you look at this text, it's not so much that Jesus is telling that guy, like, how come you didn't bring the other nine guys? What's your problem, man? No. He's writing this, and the writer, Luke, the physician, so that we can all see that God says, I'm thankful that you came back, but I also noticed a nine that never came back. Now, I don't want to pick on the other nine. I believe that when they got healed, they were kept walking. They're like, Ooh, check it out what God has done and they were healed and they probably said and kept going about their lives I mean of course they were like dude we got healed like whoa and they're like man God you're awesome but they just kept walking and the truth is that is exactly what could happen to all of us that we just keep walking about our journey and our life we come and we seek God for that breakthrough, that healing, that salvation. And then we start saying, God, but I don't got time to come back. Oh, Jesus. And we just keep walking. And God says, Jesus says, where's the other nine? Question. Did Jesus not know where the other nine were? Answer. No, of course he knew where they were. He's like, where's the other nine? Those guys, man, those guys, they're going to be here. What time are they going? No. He's saying, I notice gratitude and ingratitude. I notice it. I see it. I see it. And today, I think God wants to, God and the God that we serve is looking for men and women, families, churches that would say, God, we haven't forgotten about how good you are. That you would say, in my home, we shall serve. We have not forgotten about the goodness of God. Oh, I'm thankful for this and for that and this and that. And I'm thankful for all that happens. But I'm not just moving on to the next thing and what I want next and what's next and what's next. Listen, I'm a driven person. And there's nothing wrong with having goals dri dri being driven and aspirations. But if we are not careful, we will be so goal-driven that we always have an insatiable hunger for something that's in front of us that we forget about where God has brought us and how good he has been heaven notices thankful in all circumstances I got so many texts there a lot of verses I want to read but for the sake of time let's go to the third point write this down and I'm gonna I'm I'm pray for everybody there is a breakthrough in our thank you okay there's a breakthrough in our thank you and I want to show you from this text how we who are the followers of Christ, disciples, we who are living in this side of the cross, the risen Savior, we don't serve a dead God, we serve a God who's alive. The Bible says, let the redeemed the Lord say so. We serve a God that if the same power that, that rose Christ from the dead dwells in me, it will quicken, watch this now, not my spirit, it will quicken my mortal body. What does that mean? Something from the spiritual transfers into the physical and I begin to live it out this realm. This realm. So we are living on this side. And what God is showing us in this text is that there's a breakthrough. When I come back and give God praise, God says, I have something reserved that's specific for praisers, people that are grateful, people that are thankful. And I want to show you this in verse number uh, 19. Put it up here on the, on the screens if you can. When that one guy comes back, first he says, you know, uh, 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 you know uh, go to verse 18. He says, where are the other nine? And he's trying to say, I, I'm keeping count because God knows how good he is and how much he wants to bless you and how much he wants to transfer not our mind 
mind of entitlement, but a mind of gratefulness. And he says, there's no one return to give praise except God and this foreigner because he was a Samaritan. He didn't, you know, he wasn't a religious person. He was someone who was just grateful for the goodness of God. I didn't grow up in church. I didn't have a godly background. Everybody in my family was far from God, but I just know what God has done in my life and to whom much is forgiven, much is loved. And you don't know. That's why don't ever judge somebody by the way they praise God because you don't know what God just did. Like, what's wrong with them? Why are they all excited? You don't know that they just got delivered from a 20-year habit. You don't know if they just got healed from cancer. You don't know if their family member just surrendered. You have no idea what somebody's thanking God for. And so you got to get a revelation that God, I may be a foreigner. I may have been estranged. I may have been disconnected. My family tree is a drunken, messed up, high-loaded tree. But I'm thankful that Jesus died on a tree. He died on a tree, and by his blood, I now have royalty that flows through my veins, and my children's children's children shall be blessed to the fourth, tenth generation. Give God a praise if you believe his goodness is even for foreigners and strangers. Oh, God. Give your neighbor a high five. Tell him he saved a foreigner like me. I know I don't look all church but I'm just saved. He tells them this. No one returned but this foreigner. All right, okay. I get it. Those other nine, they know the religious calisthenic. But this guy, he just, or this girl, doesn't say they're men or women, just as lepers. Apologize for making, you know, I don't know if they're men or women, so it could be any one of us. Come on, somebody. Except this foreigner. And Jesus says in verse 19, and I close. Then he said to him. So first Jesus speaks to the situation. Then Jesus says, I got a word for you. He says, rise. You're at my feet. He says, rise. Because see, most people want to touch God's, God, want what's in God's hand, but this man just wanted to touch the feet of Jesus. There's something powerful about a man and a woman who can kneel before God and just want to be humble at his feet. Everybody wants his hand. Everybody wants something from God. But when you're like, God, I don't want nothing. I just want to give you praise. God says, rise, my child. Rise, my daughter. Rise, my man. Rise, my prince. Rise, you, you young person. Rise up. He says, rise up and go. Watch this now. Your faith has made you well. This was a separate healing. It was talking about Jesus's, I'm sorry, Jesus was talking about his spirit. He says, now get up, your faith, where's my faith? Has made you spiritually well. In other words, there was a whole internal breakthrough that was attached to his praise and his thank you. Meaning, if God does a miracle in my life, and I see this happen all the time, and I say this with love, grace, affection, and, and everything, but I've seen this happen so many times where people are go to God like a vending machine. Put in a quarter, I need a miracle, see you when I need another miracle. And what they don't realize is you're missing out on the greatest thing that God wants to do on your life. It's not outside of you, it is inside of you. And the Bible says when this God came back, he says, rise, now you're going to be healed on the inside. In other words, the rest of them, they got half a miracle. You you, my praiser, you, my grateful servant, you, my thankful attitude, you're going to get what they didn't get. I got a miracle breakthrough just for you, but it's attached to a worshiper. It's attached to a person that comes back to God on Sunday, on Monday, on Tuesday, on Wednesday, that comes to him in his word and say, God, I just can't move on. I got to get back to your feet. Somebody get to your feet and tell God I've come back to give you praise.